Okay, so uh, my name's Debbie Wilson, and I'm going to talk about this um, piece of research that I've been doing as part of my doctorate program. Uh, the doctorate is a Doctor of Health Sciences at AUT, and one of my supervisors is sitting right in the front row there, so I'm quite nervous. So to give you a little bit of background in this very short piece of time that we've got to talk about this, um, there's basically a huge interest into sustainable healthcare practice. I think with the um, Paris Climate Agreement and, and the emphasis now on the Climate Change Act and the Zero Carbon Bill that the government recently announced, there's a real interest nationally and globally on, on carbon reduction activities. So I was really interested several years ago to actually look at the um, effect of the Waste Minimization Programme. The Waste Minimization Programme is something that I was involved in activating um, and waste forms a part of one of our big carbon um, it's, a, it's part of our carbon profile for the organisation. So there's actually measurable um, quantitative and qualitative outputs of our waste minimisation programme. And that's what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about. So studies um, globally are focused on sustainability and waste. Sustainability refers to um, being able to practice within your means, within a given budget, and to be able to do as you would normally, what we'd like to do, and going on into the future without depleting the resources. So that's the kind of thing when you think about being sustainable, you can carry on doing something ongoing. And waste minimization is, is, is one of the um, key com components of a sustainability program. Now, this is actually one of the few studies that's been conducted in the healthcare sector in New Zealand. Um, and the success of a waste reduction program, um, there's many different indicators you could look at and measure. There's quantitative indicators such as costs and carbon emissions and volumes, for instance, volumes of waste diverted from landfill. And then there's also more qualitative aspects that you could look at, which I was very interested in doing because actually it's, it's really down to what people are willing to do at an individual level and that help, that kind of really um, affects the outcomes of any program that you roll out in a large organisation. So the overall aims of the research was to evaluate the effectiveness of the program. And it, wanted, it was very interested in looking at all the levels of the organisation and that's why the mixed methods um, case study approach was um, used. And it sought to determine which were the best indicators so it could actually influence future um, practice within the healthcare sector. So I'll just find my space. Left handed, I find this a struggle. <laughs> According to the liter literature, there's quite a lot of difference between sites and settings. So if you've got a, you can imagine if you've got a really busy acute hospital with a lot of patient throughput, then you're going to have a lot of stuff being used. So they'll generate a whole heap of waste. So there's kind of differences within the literature, and you could kind of anecdotally you can relate to that as well. So I was very interested in seeing the difference between sites. So tangi tangible organisational waste volumes and carbon footprint data were measured from two healthcare sites, that's at Manukau Superclinic and the Middlemore Hospital. So the Middlemore Hospital, as you know, is mostly inpatient activity with a little bit of outpatient activity and the MSC is the opposite. So actual data were compared with employee perceptions of the programme and the perceptions were measured by a survey. The survey was developed and piloted and employed pre and post implementation of the programme. It's actually quite tricky when you think about this is not an experimental um, piece of work as such. You can't um, control all the variables. So it's more of a quasi-experimental design. So the programme existed before the research was started but only in smaller and, and kind of isolated areas. So the actual program was rolled out across the um, board. And, and of course, different areas were quicker to adopt the changes than others. It depended on how long it took to give the education, to provide the resources, and to set up the servicing of the bins and stuff. So it's, you know, it was quite tricky to roll it out all on what day one it rolled out over a stage time. So the survey was handed out 12, with 12 months pre and post, so you could actually compare the, um, the ch you could see the change as a result of a 12 month snapshot. And we also measured um, waste data at the same points. The survey captured most, 
mostly quantitative, but there was also two open-ended questions on the survey. So the quantitative questions targeted specific waste program features, and this is set within the context of the wider environmental sustainability program. It's really important not to just take out the waste part of a sustainability program because what you're really hoping to do with any kind of change management program is, in, is to see how behaviours link into other pro-environmental behaviours. So it's really important to situate the waste program within the wider piece. And then the qualitative questions just gave, gave respondents the opportunity to gave, give suggestions or just even add a comment, um, discuss any barriers or frustrations. So it just kind of gave them the opportunity to go beyond ticking in a box. So the waste reduction interventions we found have a positive effects on sustainability outcomes. And if you think about sustainability outcomes, generally you're talking about environmental, financial and social. And there was a positive correlation um, found between waste to landfill volumes and carbon emissions, which is it's actually really sounds kind of straightforward to say that, but it's actually quite good to say that because not every healthcare institution can measure the carbon emissions at the moment. <coughs> but they do tend to measure waste volumes. <coughs> and we did find key differences as a result of site and setting, which was good to confirm that. This is my flashiest slide. Um, so the results have been split into the three um, categories, audit results, quantitative and qualitative, both from the survey. So in a, in a nutshell, there were avoided costs. So, you know, waste costs money to be transported and disposed of. So you can look at those costs from an environmental and a financial perspective. And so there were avoided costs and the emissions did fall as a result of avoiding the landfill disposal, which is the kind of business as usual approach. The survey um, was interesting because some of the findings were not significant, but of the significant findings, the three categories have been listed there as awareness, work context and segregation behavior. So awareness, was we were interested in looking at the depth of knowledge um, that people or clinicians or healthcare workers have on this subject matter. And we kind of know that it's, um, climate change and global warming isn't the normal part of a curriculum deve curricular development. So actually the depth of knowledge is quite superficial and this finds, I think this, um, this, this is supported by the evidence of this study. And the really interesting thing was employees actually said um, they really favoured face-to-face interactions over electronic delivery of messages, which is quite important because we give a lot of emails out and daily dose messages, but actually going to all the areas and talking to people had more of a um, higher level of engagement. And then segregation behaviour, there's marked improvements in people's reported segregation behaviour. So they could recycle more papers as a result of the programme and recycle more commingled, for example. And then the survey um, data was really interesting because it added in the fact that actually people found this really important and it was spoke to their hearts and not so much to their minds. So I think that's a really important finding because um, there were social benefits of the programme. It also showed that patient activity data that takes into account inpatient and outpatient activity is really important when looking at carbon emissions or waste as opposed to one that just looks at FTE. And emotive, as I said, motive um, drivers actually really motivate people and can impact on other pro-environmental behaviours. So of the recommendations, these are the few key ones. Um, future waste and sustainability programme developers would benefit from using face-to-face -face interactions. And we also need a lot more research, basically, into what ben which benchmarks are, are useful in different areas and different sectors, not just within the healthcare sector. So the findings support the adoption of the healthcare waste redu reduction program, and the organisation would all about organisations benefit from tracking outcomes of such and using an indicator that captures inpatient outpatient activity, provides meaningful data. Any questions?